Hello and welcome. Her ability to tackle taboo issues has made her Egypt's highest paid actress, though a claim from the critics has also come with anger from the religious conservatives. That doesn't stop her pushing the boundaries of the Arab film industry. This week on One on One, meet the legendary and charming Yusra. In one of her more recent films, Yakubian Building, reportedly the most expensive Egyptian film to date, Yusra deals with some difficult themes, from adultery and political corruption to Islamic terrorism and even homosexuality. Her willingness to embrace controversial topics has earned her respect, but also landed her in court as conservative Islamists accused her of dressing too sexily. She had made her mark quickly since her debut film in 1980. Intelligent but stupid brought her together in the first of many duets with renowned fellow Egyptian actor Adel Imam. It helped make her a household name. Working with celebrated director Yusuf Shaheen on his Alexandria trilogy also brought Yusra acclaim and awards. Her work as a United Nations goodwill ambassador keeps her busy nowadays supporting the rights of children. But Yusra also continues to use the power of cinema to push the boundaries of social reform. Yusra, it's nice to talk with you. It's my pleasure. Tell me first, how did you come up with a name? Because a lot of people around the world know you, but they don't know where it all came from. You know that I have two names. Nobody knows this. I mean, a few knows this. My nickname is Sevin. It's a Turkish name. And Sevin me means that uh, the flower which never dies. Yusra it comes from the Quran, and it's called in the Ma'al-Usri Yusra. And I had two grandmothers. They were sisters. Each one of them, she said, I'm going to call her Yusra. And the other said, I'm going to call her Sevin. But I was, I was always uh, dealt with, I always dealt with Sevin all my childhood. I never knew that my real name was Yusra until I was 17. Yes, that's when you adopted it. I never knew that. So what, as an actress, what are your limits? What do you believe um, you can and can't do? Are there any things you wouldn't do as an actress? Mm, yes, the, I mean, I, w I wouldn't go out of my way much. I mean, I believe that acting is, is being very courageous. I believe that acting, uh, I should do. I shouldn't be ashamed of doing anything. Because this is acting, after all. It's not that I'm doing me. I'm not doing my own character. I'm doing a character in the film. So uh, I believe I would do everything I'm convinced of. I will never do something I'm not convinced of. Well, you became a sex symbol, so se being sexy is okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine, of course. <laughs> what about um, things, you know, topics you wouldn't touch? Religion, for example, things like that? No, in fact, we, we did, um, you know, my latest film, Jakob Jan Building, although I have only five scenes in that film, but the novel is so wonderful. You know, it's the best sellers for the last five years, and it has been translated in different uh, languages, English and French, and I think Spanish, and now it is still being translated in other kind of uh, languages. Uh, Jakob Jan Building has been has been going through or, or breaking a lot of taboos. How do they become terrorists? How can you use somebody who's so fragile to be a terrorist? So it's in a way or another we are showing what is real religion and how are they using under how they are using people under the umbrella of religion. It also touches on issues such as homosexuality, which really everything is. It does. It does. It's it's a panoramic film. It's about fifty or seventy years of our lives in, in in Egypt and how much we changed and what made them change to that extent. But people in Egypt, there is a big conservative society here as well, and they do react. And you've even had to fight in court against yes. some of the things. So yes. how, did that ever put you off? Did you ever think you know it's getting to be too much? Uh, no, in fact, it made me more persistent and more, I, I, no, I mean, this country has been always a free country. Why should we now have this kind of, you know, uh, 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 different chains coming? And it's new, it's brand new to us. I haven't felt it ever in my life when I was a little girl in school. I had my, my teachers, they were English, and I had my uh, friends, they were uh, Christians, and I never had this kind of differences although they are still my best friends till now. 
but people react here so I mean so aggressively sometimes um, and people worry that the society is becoming more conservative uh, the acclaimed writer Nagib Mahfouz, for example, was stabbed and so on. Do you, yes, ever worry? Of course. do you ever worry for your safety when you do something that the conservatives might see as too much? You know what? I feel safe. At the very end, I have to tell you. The end of the line, I still feel safe between my people. Although they might not like what I'm offering or doing, but still I feel safe. I read in one article that you describe yourself as an angry woman. What does that mean? A little bit, <laughs> yes, I am, a little bit. Because... You know, there are obstacles that just stop you. And, and those obstacles are not done because uh, they are big obstacles. Just people are trying to stop you and to make you, you know, fall down. And then you have to clean up yourself and walk again. And this is really, it makes me very angry because I don't feel that they even have the right to do this for all of us, for our lives, to, to, to put obstacles in your life. There is enough. You shouldn't put small things to make me yani, go backwards, not forward. How much of that anger also stems from your childhood? Because you had a tough childhood. Your parents divorced before you were born, actually. Yes, exactly. Lived with your mother, and then you suddenly moved to your father at the age yes. of 14. Uh, my mother was a very free woman, and she was a very courageous woman to live alone with a child and to, to, to be divorced after six months. I mean, this, is, uh, this was a big step and she said I'm gonna take it and I, I want you alone no problem I'm your father and I'm your mother and she fought for me she fought a lot for me and she gave me this kind of pers personality she made me understand she made me she made me feel uh, I was her friend even when I was a little girl it's not only a mother and a little daughter and she's trying to protect her I used to go and tell her for instance I remember my first time when I told her you know ma I want to have a boyfriend. And she went like this, a boyfriend, how old are you? You're 13. I said, yes. And if you tell me no, I'm going to have it. So she told me, of course, she, t she found me, Annie, so nice to her. She said, what do you want? I know you're acting, you're, you're, you're cooking something over there. <laughs> so I told her, and what she said, she, she stayed with herself a little bit, and she said, let him call me. I have to see him. And he did, and I made him meet her. And I remember that she did make me wear lipstick for the first time in my life, and I was so excited, 13 years old, putting lipstick. And she said, you come back with this lipstick on. Go to the movies and you come back. <laughs> <laughs> very clever. I don't want it. Very clever of her. <laughs> so I'll never, remember, I'll never forget these touches. Which she, she, she gave me a lot. And how's your father in comparison then? My father was a little bit strict and he was a little bit uh, tough with me and I was the only girl. I never had sisters or brothers. And also he made me, uh, uh, he, he made me learn a lot of things through this. He made me know what is being, you know, walking in the middle and not being too extremist. Although sometimes in things I, I face in life, I am an extremist, but when I am like this, or when, when it happens that I feel that I'm giving more to something than the other, I just remember, and I have to go back and to balance myself again. How did you get into films? By accident, I have to tell you. I was, uh, I was, uh, I saw once a great actress, Saad Husni. She was making a film, and I was with my father, and we were crossing the road, and then I said, oh my God, I wish I can be like her. It was a dream. One year later, I was with my father, and I had an interview in, uh, in the radio. Of course, in the radio, they don't see you, they just hear you. So I said, uh, so he asked me, what would you like to be? I said, an actress. It just came out like this. Do you know how to act? I said, yes, of course, I know how to act and sing. And he said, sing something. And they called me and they told me, can we see you? And I went and I saw Mr. Abdul Nasr, who gave me my first chance. And uh, he made me an, a leading actress. And ever since he told me, never step backwards, always be forward. You also were uh, sort of adopted, if you like, or taken under the protection of uh, Rushdie Abaza, who was a, a big name as well. Rushdie Abaza was, uh, he was my father's friend. 
And also, he, he played a big role in my life, and he was a godfather for me, and he really cared so much about me, and he wanted to protect me in a way or another. And he was one of a kind. I don't think there is another Rushdie Abaza. Did you, I mean, did you, did you have a very hard time making that break, though? You got a leading role early on, but was it a tough path from that? It was, because uh, I stayed for about three, four years. No, nobody saw anything of my, uh, of my work, and still I was working. I made films, and I stayed, and, and it never showed up. And it, never, it never went on the, on the movies, and nobody knew me. They just knew me through pictures. They never saw my talent. And uh, I remember my, my first film when it went uh, in the cinema, it flopped and it was a disaster. Were you but in the I audience? Did, did you watch it from the audience? Of course, <laughs> and it was a disaster for me because it was, after all this time, it was, ah, now we'll see what she did. And it failed, but I still love it. It's my first film. And where was the uh, turning point where your career was big, though? Where, where did you feel it was actually moving? I felt uh, when I met Mr. Shaheen, Yusuf Shaheen, he gave me lessons, very indirect. Whenever I sit with him, I talk and I talk. And he told me, look, it's not enough to be pretty. You're gifted. And you have to understand that this gift is not only yours. You have to use it the right way. And I began changing, kind of, uh, you know, trying to have quality, not quantity. And uh, I think I began doing this with him. There are some, you know, bad things I chose, but it, it did not stop me. It did not stop me. But there must be bad so that you can see the good. You, you can't be always number one. You can't be always the right decision. You have to, talk, to take some wrong decisions in life. Well, Yusuf, we're going to ask you more about your life in just a moment. Don't go away. We're going to take a break here on 101. We'll be right back.